Hi. Ow. We are at 140 subscribers, very close to 150, but this is my 140 subscriber special. And I decided I was gonna be doing something very different for this video. I'm gonna be answering the very important question that a lot of people have been asking me. And that question is, what the fuck are my favorite comic books? So I, all my comic books in my collection are pretty much my faves. But I chose some of my top ones that I put on this list. Uh, a few of these are 90s comics um, and a couple of them are fairly recent. Well, I mean, recent in my collection. And these are not all my favorite ones. I just collected some of my favorite ones. Um, I'll have like an honorable mentions that talks about some of my favorite ones. These are the ones I chose to be in my top favorites. A few, uh, a bunch of these are 90s comics. I'm just going to throw that out the window right now. I really love 90s comics. They're so much fun. I, and, um, I'm trying to collect more 90s comics. These are some of my top favorite comic books. These are no, are, they are in no particular order. I'm describing whichever ones that I, they're describing which ones are in front of me because I'm lazy, but I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite comic books from my collection. So, starting off with number one, we have The Silver Surfer by Stan Lee, which contains all of the original 18 issues of The Silver Surfer, written by Stan Lee and illustrated by Sal Buscema. And one of them was written, was illustrated by Jack Kirby, where, yeah, one of them, like the final, like issue number 18, that was illustrated by Jack Kirby, where he, Silver Surfer meets the Inhumans. This is fun because I didn't have many Stan Lee comic books the only other stanley comic book i have is my invincible iron man on this volume one volume two and three are going to be coming out this this august at the same time actually so i'm going to collect those and add them to my collection your lightsabers will make a fine addition to my collection but i'm really excited to read those but um i wonder if they're going to continue on with more of the silver surfer because i i love this book very philosophical. It is a very fascinating take on a Marvel character because it takes the idea of nothing is ever really pure in utopia and then spreads that out. I can't talk a single goddamn thing. This is fun because it introduces Silver Surfer to a lot of the Marvel characters, mainly the Fantastic Four. And we ha we see him fight up against the Ghost, who is a pirate, um, Doctor Doom, uh, Thor, Mephisto, who tries to steal his soul. Um, some of the Galactus, we see him against the Human Torch, but Mephisto is pretty much a main antagonist in this entire, in, the, in this entire, in the original books. Stanley wrote all these, um, and I loved it so much. The way he writes, it's very poetic, very Shakespearean and philosophical, it's very beautiful. This is just a beautiful read. I totally recommend this if you can find this anywhere. Um, I, I, it's the Omnibus edition. It's got the Addy Granoff cover variant of the Silver Surfer. It's, uh, it's a take on the original cover of the Silver Surfer. Uh, next up we have Avengers, the Kane Dynasty Omnibus. I actually got this before I saw Ant-Man 3. And after watching that movie a few times, I can agree that actually that the only good thing in that movie is Jonathan Majors, but unfortunately Disney won't be using him again. So I wonder who they're gonna recast as Kane. This was actually very fascinating because this was the first time I ever saw Kane the Conqueror in a book. I recognized the character, like when I saw Loki and he talked about it and he talked about being a ruler or a conqueror, he who remains. I've been dubbed many names by many people. A ruler, a conqueror, he who remains, a jerk. I was like, I remember you. And then I looked into it and I was like, who is he? And I thought it was, I thought it was going to be Dr. Doom at the end of time, but um, no, it was Kane the Conqueror. And then I saw he was going to be in the new Ant-Man movie. And I was like, I need to do my research on this because he looked amazing. He acted amazing. I loved it. I love this. I love this book. It shows like different Avengers stories. And that's kind of what I love about the Avengers. They split up and they do different quests that somehow tie into the bit main big event. And Kane explains the future of the entirety of the Kane Dynasty saga um, in the beginning of the book and says like, these things will happen and, and foreshadows it all. And then we see that progress through the book and into the final fight and it is just, perfectly well done it looks beautifully well done and 
I totally recommend this. It's a great read. It's a great Avengers story. If you want to look at another great Avengers story, I totally recommend Jonathan Hickman's Infinity. This is 90. This is, this came out in 1998. Yes, 1998 and Avengers Annual 2001. I don't know what I'm saying, right? All right, next up, we have Ghost Rider by Daniel Way, The Complete Collection. I love Daniel Way's writing. I want to collect his Deadpool run. I loved his Venom run. And the art, Mark Texiera, they just did a fantastic job. I recognize Mark Texiera's uh, style. It's painted and drawn as well. Um, sort of similar to Clayton Crane's original work. It's a very beautiful read, very dark and gritty, and that's what Ghost Rider needs to be. It's a beautiful story. If I had to choose another Ghost Rider story to, to base it on, I would say Ed Brisson's Ghost Rider. He has a complete collection out now. I'm, unfortunately, that story did not really continue. But I totally recommend this. It's a great Ghost Rider story. It collects uh, Ghost Rider issues 1 through 19 starting from 2006. Uh, next up, we have The Eternals by Jack Kirby and Peter B. Gillis Omnibus. Jack Kirby did the first 19 issues of The Eternals. Uh, he wrote and illustrated those. And then Peter B. Gillis did his own Eternal series, which lasted 12 issues. It's a great series, great continuation of Jack Kirby's Eternals. If you don't know, I'm a, I'm a diehard Eternals fan since the movie. Um, I love I love the story. It is beautiful. It's a very fascinating concept. They take mythology and then insert that out of the book. There are two people who really understand like the mythos of the Eternals really well. And that's Kieran Gill when he did it in 2021 and someone did it with... Axe Judgment Day. <laughs> Guys, it's allergy season, so I'm so I'm really dying right now. But the other person who I feel like understood the mythos for the Eternals is Neil Gaiman. Um, when he did his run of Eternals, it was just beautifully done. Really gives off that Jack Kirby feel. It's just really amazing. I totally recommend this book. If you like Jack Kirby art, like, like this cool I, this cool thing that pops out, even before 90s comics, it still is beautiful. 1976, it was still, like, it's still amazing. And then they did a new Eternal series for, um, that Peter P. Gillis wrote in 1985, and it was still awesome. <laughs> All right, next up, we have Iron Man Extremis. This is the best Iron Man. I have a lot of great Iron Man stories, but, like, if I had to choose like as a number one story, I would definitely choose Iron Man Extremis as number one because this literally was the ins was some of the inspiration for the three Iron Man movies. <laughs> from the book were taken to use for the movie even some of the designs they even had the artist Addy Granoff for this book do the concept art for the movie and now he's actually a concept artist over at Marvel it's just a beautiful read great storytelling Warren Ellis Addy Granoff just a beautiful art style like here's something like my it, ha it contains a lot of my favorite Iron Man Iron Man cover arts that Addy Granoff did <laughs> Totally recommend reading this book. Uh, you can find it anywhere. Three, six issues long, uh, about 200 something pages. The art is amazing. The story is perfect. Go read it. If you want a great Iron Man story, definitely start reading this because it also some, has some explanation of his origins. But if you want to do like classic Iron Man stuff, go with Stan Lee's. If you want to like modern retelling of the origins, go for Iron Man season one. If you want to go for modern age, 
uh, go for Matt Fraction, Salvador Lorocas, Iron Man, or Dan Slott's Iron Man. Those are some really great stories. All right, next up was one, it was actually the first Marvel omnibus I ever got. If you harken back to the early, early days of my comic book channel, it's still there. Um, you can check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. It is my Moon Knight omnibus. Charlie Huston, um, Mike Benson, and Greg Hurwitz as writers. It was a great take on Moon Knight. Very dark, a detective story. I really dive deep into sort of the mental health. An older Moon Knight and the post-Civil War era was very awesome. I, I fell in love with it. For the, I fell in love with it instantly. Great ending. Uh, ends with the Daredevil Shadowland. Um, his three issues of it in uh, for Moon Knight Shadowland. And Contra plays a very pivotal role in this book. Um, starts off and it and he's just great in it. I love it. And we see all the great characters. And this is a new take on a character. If I had to do a Moon Knight fan film, I would definitely do this. Uh, he's just beautiful. I totally recommend it. Next up is the movie time comic to the flash movie i love the movie and i love this book it's a it's it's a great way of like introducing like out with the old and in with the new with like the original suit that we see in justice league and the snyder cut and then going into the new suit which uh, the new suit we see in the movie i love this book and i love the movie i love as miller and i love the and i love the um and i, I want to see them as flash in the dcu because they did a good job I want to see more. This is my favorite panel in the book when he runs on water. It is just awesome. When he's fighting Tar Pit, it is just amazing. If you want to see the movie, go check it out. It's on HBO Max. You can buy it as well. This is another one of my favorite comic covers where he's moving so fast and like everything else is all the action is going on behind him and he's just butt naked trying to get out of the suit. I totally recommend it. And then watch the movie after you see this is great. All right, next up, we got Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons Watchmen. This is the first Alan Moore story I've read and one of the first DC graphic novels I actually got. It's a great story. I already did my review on it. I, you already know my opinion on it. It is just beautifully well done. I totally recommend it. The art is amazing. Story building is, is excellent. Characters, very interesting. It is amazing. Very beautiful. <laughs> my allergies are gonna kill me. I totally recommend it. you can find it on Amazon or your local bookstore. It is just perfect. If you wanna go into like DC graphic novels, read that first they don't really go into the light they it's not the same universe as like flash superman batman etc it's its own side universe they do tie the universes together with dc rebirth <laughs> all right so next up we have one of my favorite one of the first graphic novels i got it is paul jenkins and jay lee's inhumans this is a perfect story all the way through this is the greatest thing I have ever seen in my life. This is amazing. The art is consistent. The, the story is beautifully built. It keeps you guessing. The characters are very in-depth. And it is just amazing. And you really feel for every character. I'm an Inhumans fan. If they ever wanted to do an Inhumans movie, I recommend doing it after the Fantastic Four. So I introduced the Inhumans through that movie and then do this, like do a completely comic accurate movie of this book, because it's just a perfect story to introduce the Inhumans in. And keep Ants and Mao as Black Bolt, the dude is perfect. Even if like you're new to the Inhumans, like this book explains like some of the origins and some of the world building about Adelan, Black Bolt, the royal family. It was great. I totally recommend it. Following up into the 90s is Todd McFarlane's Spawn. This again was one of the first books I read. And unfortunately, this book accidentally got some water splashed on it. And um, same with Compendium number two and three. I might have to replace them. Tom McFarlane uh, did the first like 25 issues, I think. And then Greg Capullo took over on the illustration, but Tom McFarlane still wrote it. Still took over for like a bunch of the for a bunch of the story. And Spawn is just a beautifully written character. Very different from the original superhero type. Um, undead came back for love. It was very fascinating. I totally recommend it. Very dark. Um, Image Comics, I didn't know what to think about the character. I recognized the character, but I never knew his name, and his name was Spawn. And yeah, it was just perfectly well done, and I fell in love with the book instantly. I fell in love with the character. I'm on Compendium number five. Compendium number six is going to come out soon. Um, it's just a beautiful book. It is just amazing all the way through. Like, all the books are really well done. I totally recommend, if you're going into Spawn, Definitely collect all the compendiums. It's just a masterpiece. I totally recommend it.
Next up, I won't pull it out because it is under a pile of all the books that were that I'm currently reviewing, is Heroes Reborn, the original epic. I am still in the in the process of reading this, but so far it is just wow! It's just amazing retellings so far of classic comic characters. It had a very 90s feel to it. Cool retellings of the characters. Start off great with Captain America with Rob Liefeld's Captain America, which is just amazing. Punch you in the face, then it went into Avengers, then it's going into Jim Lee's Fantastic Four, then Jim Lee was Protatio doing Iron Man, and then Jim Lee took over for Iron Man. Um, then it goes back into uh, Avengers, and then goes back into Fantastic Four. I am on the chapter where we meet Victor Von Doom, and it is just amazing so far. It is so good. Main reason I actually bought this book was actually because it had this drawing of Rob Liefeld's Captain America. <laughs> And also it had Jim Lee's Iron Man. I, I didn't know what to expect with the Fantastic Four and I had low expectations and it blew it out of the water and it was just amazing. And the Iron Man one was amazing. I had expectations for Captain America and it exceeded them. It was just really great. I totally recommend it. It was beautifully well done. And so far it is just beautiful all the way through. I totally recommend this story for any like, if you want to like, going to like modern but also look at some retellings of our of like cool comic characters do check out that book it is awesome it's a very interesting take on some of the retellings of some classic characters now here are the honorable mentions that i didn't list <laughs> couldn't put all of these in one video because a it would take too long and b i don't have enough room on my desk but this is in my opinion the number one book in my collection todd mcfarland spider-man this book is a perfect new idea of spider-man especially the way he moves the way his webs are um the storytelling is beautiful uh, if you want something cool and dynamic like 90 stuff, uh, do check out this book. It is amazing. It contains Spider-Man issues 1 through 14 and 16. Issue 15 was illustrated by Eric Larson. And X-Force number 4. It does some really great iterations. It still contain. It still moves with the Marvel continuity with, like, Morbius trying to find a cure for his vampirism f through Doctor Strange. That doesn't work, so he goes underneath the city. Uh, we see Dr. Connors, we, it goes in with the Spider-Man Craven's Last Hunt where Craven kills himself, uh, Ghost Rider and Hobgoblin, that is awesome, and Wolverine and Wendigo, that is pretty epic, and it ties right into X-Force, still is contained in the Marvel continuity, and it's just beautifully mastered. Original storytelling and illustrations by Todd McFarlane, I almost said Rob, Rob McFarlane. Uh, Ronald, Ronald McDonald. Cheeseburger. This is actually my favorite book of my collection. I mean, the way it's told and written, illustrated, just perfect and beautiful. I love Tom McFarlane a lot, and I love the storytelling. It's just perfect. I totally recommend it. This is my number one favorite comic of all time. In conclusion, I have a lot of great comic books in my collection, and I have a lot of favorites. And it, and Todd McFarlane is number one, and, and so is Rob Liefeld.
and Jim Lee in the Wolf's Portatio. I love a lot of great artists. I'm in love with comic books. Do not judge me. I spend a lot of money on them. My entire life is actually devoted to them. I'm just really happy that I can like share this experience with you. And this is actually kind of a tough question to answer in choosing some of my top favorite comics. Um, they're all great. I love them all. It's just beautifully well done. If you want to look at some of these, I, I do comic book reviews and unboxings. Thank you everybody for getting me to 140 subscribers. This is my entire list of like my top favorite comics in my collection. I'm happy. I really am. I'm so excited to see what the future of the comic industry is going to bring. And I actually have a secret that I was going to save for later, but here's the thing. I am writing my own graphic novel. It's going to be the first graphic novel in a series of three. And I am currently in the script writing process and then I'm going to send it over to a, and then I'm going to send it to different publishing companies. And I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. It is a very special character for me. It's original. Um, but I am so excited for you guys to see it. I really can't wait for you guys to see it. I have a great artist on standby ready to do the art as soon as I finish the script and then we'll send it over to a publishing company. I can't wait for this. It's going to be awesome. But yeah, that is pretty much my top favorite comics. I hope you've enjoyed. Do check out some of these. I totally recommend them. I also have other books that I unbox and review on my channel. Um, you can check those out as well. I have a new film out. It's called The Iron One. It's on my channel page. And also I'll leave it in the description below if you want to check it out. Please do check it out because I worked really hard on that movie. And I am so excited that you guys enjoyed it. I love making movies and I really want to make a cool comic movie. Some I want to go into like comic book movies and then make my own movies as well. Let me know what you guys think of the video in the, in the description down below. If you have any ideas for what you want me to do next for um, comic book unboxings and reviews, please also let me know in the comments down below. Please do subscribe to this channel. It would really help out a major ton. And I am I can't wait to see what I will bring you in the future and what you guys will see. I did not word that right. I cannot wait for you guys to see what I have in store for the future of my channel, even though you and I probably don't know what to do yet. That's moderately better than what I said before. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. And until next time, I will see you next week. Bye.